Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my live videos and on this video tonight there is lots to negotiate about. I am going to be giving you the latest news on Raul Jimenez from Wolves. I haven't spoken with you about Raul Jimenez in you know, a long time. After that topic I'm going to be giving you a bit more additional information on Paul Pogba. And also after that I am going to be going through with you what Manchester United's lineup could look like in in 2023 of course 2023 is quite a few years away yet so there is lots to negotiate about like i mentioned so let's start with the news on raul jimenez so according to recent reports you know we have identified raul jimenez as a transfer priority now of course raul jimenez is a striker who plays for wolves and obviously you know don't forget we are in search for a striker in that and obviously you know there's been a lot of strikers on our agenda because, you know, we are looking for an adequate replacement for Romelu Lukaku. Because, of course, Romelu Lukaku left the football club last summer. He went to Inter Milan for £72 million after he did endure two years at Manchester United. Now, the stories that are coming out regarding Raul Jimenez are stemming from the Portuguese newspaper record. And it does mention as well in the article that George Mendes um, has been, you know, working with Wolves in recent years. And he's also, you know, helping Wolves get an adequate replacement for Raul Jimenez. And it does mention, you know, that Wolves are in talks about signing Carlos Vinius from Benfica for around £53 million. Don't forget, you know, it did mention that my club, Man United, were in for him not too long ago. Now, Raul Jimenez, you know, is aware of the speculation and that, um, you know, is aware of, the, you know, the amount of clubs that have expressed their interest in him, you know, because my club, Man United, are in for him. You know, we've been in for Raul Jimenez before, though. I think Arsenal, Chelsea, Madrid and Barcelona have also been in for him. Don't forget, Raul Jimenez did say... That you know he is happy at Wolves. Um, I, I don't. I think he said this you know not too long ago, but he did say he would consider a move away from Wolves if you know Real Madrid or Barcelona you know were to approach the players. So I think he would be interested in making a move to the La Liga. I've got to make an admission now. I think Raul Jimenez is a very very good striker. He is only at the age of twenty nine, so he is in his late twenties. Uh, don't forget, you know, Wolves did get him on a permanent transfer. Um, I think he's Wolves' his most expensive signing because I think Wolves paid around £30 million for Raul Jimenez. It was in 2019 and he did sign, was it a four or was it a four and a half year deal with Wolves? So he has got a contract with them until 2023. Uh, obviously, you know, he was on loan at Wolves before, you know, Wolves got him permanently. He had a long season loan with Wolves. I think Wolves did pay Benfica around, was it, £3 million to get him on loan. I think Raul Jimenez has made around 67 appearances for Wolves since his arrival in the Premier League and I think he scored around 20-odd goals. Um, he was also good, you know, at Benfica. You know, he was very, very good for them. You know, I think he won the Portuguese Cup with them. I think, you know, won two titles with Benfica as well. And he was at Benfica, I think, a few years. Of course, before he was at Benfica, he was at Atletico Madrid for a few years. And obviously, you know, he began his uh, career in America, did Raul Jimenez. But, you know, I do really, really like him a lot. And I definitely, you know, would take him at Manchester United. You know, prolific goal scorer, well proven in the Premier League. And I think he goes well alongside the likes of Triore. Triore, you know, in Wolves' attacking line. He really, really does. And Diego Jota, you know, he goes well alongside him. But Wolves have got some very, very good players. And like I said, last season, they enjoyed a very, very good season, did Wolves, because last season, they finished seventh. And obviously, you know, reflects on that, they got a uh, qualification for the Europa League. So, yeah, so Manchester United are now in for Raul Jimenez. So, George Mendes is working on getting Wolves a replacement. So, if they can get Carlos Vinius in, then we know we have actually got a chance of getting, you know, Raul Jimenez on the board and that. You know, probably, you know, Raul Jimenez would cost us maybe in the 30-odd million pound range, maybe the 40-odd million pound range or something like that. But um, there you go. So, that is the latest news on him. Like I've said to you, there's a lot of uncertainty over Odina Gallo's future at the football club. 
I don't think personally that Manchester United are going to get Aldina Gallo on a permanent transfer because don't forget Shanghai Shenu said that they want a re they want twenty million pounds to let him go on a permanent transfer. It was totally contrast though to what was coming out, you know, before because it said before it only cost us fifteen million pounds to get Aldina Gallo on a permanent transfer. Obviously, you know, we paid around four million pounds to get Aldina Gallo in on loan. His wages at Shanghai Shenu were like three hundred thousand pounds a week. You know, so basically we're facing a dilemma with Aldina Gallo because, you know, you've obviously you know, got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that's keen on getting him a permanent contract at the club and uh, but on the other hand, you know, Solskjaer has been advised not to get Odina Gallo on a permanent transfer because some people believe that £20 million is too much for him. Now, don't forget Odina Gallo did say that he wants his loan deal at the football club extended because Odina Gallo's loan at the football club does expire at the end of this month and that. Uh, Shanghai Shenu have given their verdict on it and they've said of Shanghai Shenu, Shanghai Shenu have said, that they expect him to return in time for the start of, Ch of the Chinese Super League season. I think the Chinese Super League season does start in July. Don't get me wrong, before the football season got suspended, you know, Odina Gallo did really, really well because he has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. You know, he has got, what, four goals in three starts for the football club. And like I said before, he's been a very, very good cover-up to Marcus Rashford, you know, as Odina Gallo. But I don't think we'll get him on a permanent transfer. You know, don't forget Newcastle have expressed their interest in him. You know, it did say the Sergio Arabians are to take over Newcastle. You know, then they'll look to get Odina Gallo in. But I think he'll probably make a return back to Shanghai Shenu. Obviously, before Odina Gallo was at Man United, he'd played in the Premier League before anywhere, before he was at Shanghai Shenu, because don't forget he enjoyed like three years, was it, with Watford, scored like 39 goals in 99 games and that, and he is a lifelong Manchester United fan. But when the season does resume, and it's looking very, very likely it's going to be resuming, you know, Marcus Rashford's going to be back, because obviously, you know, Marcus Rashford's been visiting our Carrington tra training ground twice a week in the last fortnight, and he has been stepping up his fitness regime, and I think Rashford is around 80% fit now, of course, Marcus Rashford has been out of a back injury since January. So the last game he did play Rashford was our 1-0 win against Wolves in the FA Cup third round replay in that. So there you go. But like I've said to you before, you know, we have got a lot of good attacking players. Um, you already know the news on Moussa Dembele. You already know the news on him. You know, he's been another striker on our agenda in that. So there you go. Now I'm going to delve into the news on Paul Pogba. You know, there's been a lot of positivity coming out regarding Paul Pogba recently, but I've just read this in the Busby Babe, um, the Busby Babe, Busby Babe article, and it does mention that Paul Pogba does want to stay at Manchester United. Now, let's be honest, in recent weeks, it hasn't really mentioned about, you know, Paul Pogba wanting to stay at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, it did say, you know, that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants to keep him at the football club because he wants to partner up Paul Pogba with Bruno Fernandes in our midfield because I think, you know, Paul Pogba would go uh, very, very well alongside Bruno Fernandes in our midfield. And don't forget, Paul Pogba has not yet had the chance to play alongside Bruno Fernandes in our midfield. Obviously, Pogba and Fernandes in, you know, our team. Obviously, you know, you'd have Bruno Fernandes in the number 10, you'd have Pogba in the number 6, or you'd have Paul Pogba in the number 8. So let's just put that into the equation. But I haven't really had a perception on Paul Pogba this season because he's only played eight times for the football club. His appearances have been limited due to his injuries of Paul Pogba's. Obviously, you know, the last time he played was our 4-1 win against Newcastle on Boxing Day. And the last time he started from the start was back in September. And that. It's also confirmed as well that Paul Pogba has been training. Um, he was recently training in the Cheshire Cricket Club with Lindelof, Martial, Lindelof, Martial and Andres Pereira, I think. So, yeah, it's good that he's stepping up his fitness regime, is Paul Pogba. But, yeah, he's going to be back, you know, when the season does resume. I think, by the way, Paul Pogba did have the surgery on his ankle back in January. But Paul Pogba, Paul Pogba has revealed his plans ahead of his return. Obviously, you know, he's aiming to be the best player in the world. And yeah, so now he does reportedly want to stay at Manchester United does Pop, but I don't know if Paul Pop is going to be here for the foreseeable future, but I can confirm he will be here next season. Now, 
And if he's, you know, to do well when he comes back and if he's to, you know, do that, you know, going into next season, if he does well when he comes back, then, you know, maybe we could consider giving him a new long-term contract at the football club. Now, obviously, you know, as you all know anyway, Juventus are no longer in for Paul Popper because Juventus are not willing to pay the fee for him because we said want at least 100 million if we let him go this summer. And plus, they're not willing to pay his wages because don't forget, Juventus became the first Italian club to have their own cap salary. And it did mention that Juventus are only willing to offer contracts worth up to worth up to £151,000 a week. And of course, Paul Popper's wages are... Man United, of course, had around £300,000 a week. And Paul Pobber, of course, has got exactly a year remaining on his contract, but we do have an option to extend his contract by a further year. But I said if Paul Pobber leaves, you know, us, you know, he will make a return back to Juventus. You know, there's still some reports coming out saying that Juventus are willing to offer us, you know, up to three of their players in a swap deal for Pobber so they don't have to pay £100 million. Recently, it's said that, you know, Juventus are willing to offer us Federico Bernadeschi. Uh, plus cash, you know, for Pogba. Um, Adrian Rabiot's been spoken about. Also to Aaron Ramsey, Douglas Costa. Uh, Matthias Delic was mentioned a while back as well. So, yeah, they're the players, you know, that Juventus are willing to offer us. Don't get me wrong, Pogba enjoyed four good years in cheering with Juventus, but the vast majority of his performances with us, you know, since he rejoined, have been totally comparison. You know, the... We saw the best of Paul Pobby, you know, in that three-month period when Solskjaer was the interim manager in that. So, there you go. Real Madrid are no longer in for him, like I um, confirmed with you, was it early on this week or last week? I think it was last week, uh, because Marca came out, which is a Spanish newspaper, and they said, you know, Real Madrid are no longer in for him. Again, because of his wages, so the same thing, you know, with Juventus now. And, of course, Real Madrid have got other midfield uh, targets on their agenda. They've got a lot of players on their agenda of Real Madrid, don't forget, last summer, Pogba did reveal that he wanted to leave the football club and his preference was a move to Real Madrid last summer. You know, Pogba said last summer he was seeking for a new challenge and he publicly admitted Pogba last summer that he wanted to leave the football club. But the main explanation why Pogba's move to Real Madrid didn't materialise last summer was reflecting on the substantial amount we put on him because, you know, we wanted £180 million for Paul Pogba last summer. Don't forget in recent weeks, you know, PSG have been in for him, you know, Barcelona have also been in for him. I think Barcelona went in for him, you know, when you know when we had Jose Mourinho. Like I said, you know, PSG would have to either offload Mbappe or Neymar, you know, who are the two most expensive players in the world. You know, they'd have to offload one of them at least, you know, to fund the move for Paul Pogba. I said I don't think he'll go to PSG anyway. Um, it mentioned as well, uh, not too long ago, that Inter Milan have expressed their interest in Paul Pogba. And don't forget, Inter Milan have already recruited three of our players in that. But like I said to you, um, it did confirm as well that Ed Woodward had lowered Paul Pogba's asking price from 150 to 100 million pounds. It mentioned the other week that you know Paul Pogba could just he could leave Man United for just 60 or 70 million pounds. But I think Solskjaer's had a few negotiations with Pogba you know, regarding his future at the club. And Solskjaer knows how much of an imperative player he is. Mini Raliola, who's Pogba's agent, you know, you know, we've been very, very critical of him. Obviously, you know, reflect on some of the comments he has said, you know, regarding, you know, Man United since the turn of the year. Mini Raliola, you know, has been working on getting his client a transfer away from Man United, at least in the last couple of years now and stuff like that. He's held talks with Real Madrid and he's also held talks with Juventus and that. But yeah, Pob Bruno you know, is going to be staying at Manchester United. I'm 90% certain he's going to be staying at the football club and that. But, you know, maybe he won't be here for the foreseeable future. But, you know, United fans have got different perceptions on Pob. Some United fans keep him, some United fans would let him go. Obviously, you know, the football season's been suspended for eight a good eight weeks now. But before the football season got suspended, um, you know, Pogba said, you know, he was interested in staying. Solskjaer said in his press conference prior to last game, you know, that Paul Pogba will remain at Manchester United next season. And, you know, he is the age of, what, 27 is Paul Pogba. So he's still got a lot of years ahead of him. Definitely, definitely has. And, you know, he won two trophies. Well, he has won two trophies with the football club, you know. He won the FA Cup and... Not the FA Cup, sorry, the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season at Manchester United. Don't forget as well, Pogba enjoyed a very difficult time under the Mourinho era. 
Yeah, he had a really, really bad relationship with Mourinho. But there again, Mourinho had bad disputes with a lot of the top players at Man United. You know, he really, really did. And that was one of the main explanations why, you know, it didn't work out under the Mourinho era. There's other reasons as well, like I've mentioned to you before. Um, you know, did we make the right decision by getting rid of Pogba when he was younger, when we had him under Alex Ferguson? Obviously, maybe we shouldn't have got rid of him under Ferguson. We shouldn't have done. But he he basically left on the free under Ferguson because, you know, his appearances were limited at the football club. But then four years later, went and paid £8 to £9 million pounds for him. So, you know, there isn't any real sense in that, let's be honest. But since, you know, since he rejoined, he's had a long-running transfer saga. Not only that, you know, he's received a hell of a lot of criticism. And some people have said we should get rid of Pop Bino, reflect on the criticism that he has received and that. But um, there you go. Uh, yeah, so that is the latest news on Paul Pobby. So, yeah, he's going to be staying at Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, you saw my last video that I did earlier on today. It was I think it was this afternoon Um, I did that video. Of course, I give you the news on, obviously, Caladu Kulabali. You know the news on him now. Um, Obviously, you know, I give you the news on Jaden Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. I give you the news on him. Obviously, you know, it has confirmed from the mainstream media today. It was actually stemming from the Evening Standard and it's in a few media outlets saying that we're only willing to pay 60 or £70 million pounds for Jadon Sancho. I don't think either of them figures are going to be enough, you know, to convince Borussia Dortmund to offload him, even though, you know, Dortmund have, but Dortmund have come to accept that, you know, transfer fees will be reduced this summer. Obviously, you know, due to, you know, the coronavirus pandemic, I think Dortmund, you know, still remain ruthless over their valuation. You know, they still do want £100 million for Jaden Sancho. Some reports have said, you know, they want around £120 million for Sancho and that. Obviously, it's been coming out today as well in the mainstream media saying that Chelsea are planning on offloading two of their unwanted players, you know, to fund the move to San for Sancho. So they're hoping to generate around £78 million, Then they're going to get that £78 million and put it on Jaden Sancho. Whether seventy eight or eighty million, whatever it is, you know, if it's going to be is whether it's going to be enough or not to convince Dortmund to offload him or not, I do not know. But don't forget, you know, reports were coming out last week, you know, saying that Bushy Dortmund expects Sancho to stay with them, you know, this summer. Don't forget, you know, he said we'd actually changed our plans regarding Sancho. He said last week we're planning to sign him in the summer of twenty twenty one, you know, instead, you know, of signing him this summer and that. Uh, like I said, Tino, you know, Jaden Sancho is now into his third season with Borussia Dortmund. What are you doing? Charlie, you don't need that. Why? Because it's still light. It's just wasting our right. He's into his um, third season now uh, with Borussia Dortmund and that. And I think, you know, he's done very, very well for Borussia Dortmund, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. Um, like I said, he's got um, around, is it, 31 goals in 90 appearances for Borussia Dortmund. He has got a contract with Borussia Dortmund until 2022 with Sancho. Obviously, you know, Borussia Dortmund only paid around, was it, £8 million from City in 2017. So if Dortmund are to sell him, you know, they will make a huge profit on the player and that. Obviously, you now I give you the main explanation why I left Manchester City is because he didn't get any first-team opportunities at Manchester City and that. Uh, City actually, you know, purchased him from Watford for like £500,000 back in, uh, was it, 2015 because... Obviously, you know, Jaden Sancho began his footballing career at Watford. He was at Watford for several years and that. But, you know, there was reports coming out last week as well saying, you know, that if Jaden Sancho is to leave Dortmund, his transfer preference would be back, back home to London. And I said, you know, if he does go back to London, you know, he will go to Chelsea, definitely. Um, he won't go to Arsenal, he won't go to Tottenham. So I think, you know, he will go to Chelsea and that. Don't forget, you know, he did say, you know, we've been working on Jaden Sancho's contract. And we've also been in negotiations with his agent for quite some time. Don't forget Fabrizio Romano broke out that news. He was an Italian journalist and tends to be close to Man United. Don't forget as well, it did say we are willing to offer Jaden Sancho the number seven. Because like I said, we've had a lot of good number sevens up and down the generations. And we have got number seven vacant at the moment and that. 
So, um, yeah, but I've outlined already the couple of reasons, you know, why it would be beneficial for us to recommend Sancho into the football club. Don't forget, City do get around 15% of the transfer fee, you know, if Sancho is sold this summer. But we've been in him for quite a few years now because I think we first expressed our interest in Jadon Sancho in 2017. And this was before, of course, he went to Borussia Dortmund and that. But he has had a long-running transfer saga. You know, you have Dimitar Berbatov giving his verdict on it. He believes Jadon Sancho will be better off staying at Dortmund than coming to Manchester United and that. But Sancho said, you know, he said on numerous occasions this season, if he was to leave Dortmund, his preference, you know, would be a move to Man United, you know, because Rashford knows him well because they have got a very, very good friendship and Sancho is only at the age of 20 and he is actually, you know, our number one priority target in that. So, yeah, so you know, you know, this ongoing situation with Jane and Sancho, you do know the ongoing situation with him. But Borussia Dortmund did say, you know, they will not step in his way if he does want to leave and that. So, um, there you go. Now, let's delve into the next topic. Let's delve into the next topic. Now, I'm going to go through with you what Manchester United's lineup could look like in 2023. Obviously, like I said to you earlier on in the video, 2023, you know, is quite a few years away, yeah. But this is just me giving a prediction, really. You know, you may agree, you know, you may disagree, but it is a prediction anyway, so let's get on with it. So I think, you know, how we could line up in 2023, I think, you know, by in 2023, I think we could have Dean Henderson in goal. I think by 2023, he actually, you know, could become our number one goalkeeper, could Dean Henderson. Obviously, at the current time, he's out on loan at Sheffield United, is Dean Henderson. And I've got to say, you know, he has been a revelation for Sheffield United as Dean Henderson. I think this has been his second season on loan, is it, with them? We made the right decision by putting Dean Henderson out on loan because, you know, it has gained him more experience. Obviously, you know, it came out the other week saying, you know, we've not yet made a decision on Dean Henderson's future. You know, but so basically we're facing a dilemma over him because it said, you know, the season resume if the season resumes and Sheffield United do get qualification for Champions League, then we may have to pay sixty million pounds for him. Obviously, you no, know, Dean Nenton's got a contract with us until two thousand and twenty two and that. But I think we did say we're willing to loan him back out. But we won't, we won't get rid of him permanently because I think we're actually seeing Dean Henderson as a long-term replacement for David De Gea. So there you go. So in 2023, he actually you know, could become our number one goalkeeper. Obviously, David De Gea at the moment is our number one goalkeeper. He's been our number one goalkeeper for several years and he will be our number one goalkeeper next season like Solskjaer and Manchester United confirmed. But maybe in 2023, he may not be our number one goalkeeper and that. Obviously, you know, David De Gea is now into his ninth season at Manchester United. Obviously, you know, he's approaching his 10th year at the football club. Don't forget Sky Sports confirmed. Well, it come from Sky Sports, sorry, quite a few weeks ago, saying that, you know, David De Gea wants to stay at Man United and he intends to stay at the football club for the next 10 years. I'm very, very sceptical, though, that's going to happen and that maybe David De Gea could leave this summer. I'm sceptical to leave this summer, but... Maybe he could leave next year or he could leave in the next couple of years' time. There was actually no reports coming out not too long ago, like he updated you, and it was stemming from Duncan Castles, and he was saying that, you know, we're unhappy with De Gea's performances and we made a mistake by giving him a new long-term contract and that because, you know, he signed a new long-term contract last year, did De Gea. Obviously, you know, was it a four-year contract with an option of a third year and he's on 375 grand a week? at the football club is David De Gea in that. But, you know, David De Gea's, you know, probably had seven good years out of the nine years he's been here because I think he's been a liability in the last couple of years, to be quite honest with you. David De Gea's won everything here domestically. He's won the club's pay of the year four times out of the past six years. Reflect on his good run of performances. And, you know, he's made, is it nearly 400 appearances for the club in all competitions? And De Gea, of course, has been here since the Ferguson era. You know, we did pay £17 million for him from Atletico Madrid. But when De Gea does eventually leave the club, I think he will make a return back to Spain, like I've mentioned before and that. But yeah, he will remain our number one goalkeeper. But overall, David De Gea is still regarded as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. So in 2023, I think Dean Henson could become our number one. I don't think Romero will be, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Romero's basically a backup. You know, Romero tends to play in the cup games and that, you know, Lee Grant, 
He's seldom played since his arrival from Stoke. We got Lee Grant in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window, didn't we? So there you go. Um, obviously, you not know, right back. Um, it would be Alman Bissaka. Alman Bissaka is our first choice right back now. And I think Alman Bissaka is definitely the foreseeable future for Man United. I think he can be our right back for the next nine, maybe even ten years and that. Um, like I said, Valencia was also a good right back for us because Valencia enjoyed ten years at the club. Um, he left last summer, went back to Ecuador. Um, but yeah, but you know, Bissaka has been very, very good right back for us this season. It's his first season with Man United. Never was also a good right back for us back in the day. But I think you know, Bissaka, you know, probably can be the next Gary Neville. To be quite honest with you, so he'll be right back in twenty twenty three still. Um, Kulabali and Harry Maguire as a centre back partnership. They could be absent. They could be. Um, Playing together in 2023. It's just a prediction, like I mentioned. Uh, there's been obviously you no know, talks today regarding Kulabali, by the way, like I mentioned. So, you know, it was stemming from Gazzetta della Sport, which is an Italian outlet, and they've said that allegedly that, you know, Kulabali has made a decision and he wants to leave Napoli at the end of the season. You know, Liverpool have been in talks in recent weeks. You know, we've been relentlessly linked with Kaladu Kulabali. Obviously, you know, the Lapley president did say if he was willing to offload them, you know, they would want around £90 million. So, obviously, you know, we'd have to make him the most expensive centre-half in the world and we'd have to make him our most expensive sign and that. I don't see Caladou Kulabar leaving Napoli this summer, but maybe in the next few years' time he could leave and that. So, that could be, you know, our back line, um, you know, in the next few years' time. Um, Left-back, of course, Brandon Williams. He'll be our first choice left back by 2023, definitely. Um, obviously, you know, Luke Shaw's our first choice left back at the moment. You know, Luke Shaw's enjoyed some difficult spells as a Man United player, and obviously, you know, he's injury prone, but I still think he's a very, very good left back, is Luke Shaw, definitely, in that. Uh, Brandon Williams, he's done well in the games he's played in this season, but he's still inexperienced at the moment. But in the next few years' time, obviously, you know, he'd had a lot of more game time under his belt and obviously, you know, he'll gain more experience in that. So I think in 2023, Williams will be our first choice left back. I really, really do. In that midfield, uh, obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes, Pogba, if he's still here, and possibly Sol Nagias. Because maybe, you know, we could get Sol Nagias on the board by, you know, 2023 and um, I don't think we'll sign Sol Nagias this summer um, even though you know there was reports coming out you know recently saying you know that we're close to signing Sol Nagias for like 70 million pounds obviously you know that's like half of his release clause because Sol Nagias' release clause is around 130 odd million pounds isn't it I think it's around 130 to 133 million pounds don't forget Sol Nagias signed a nine-year contract with Atletico Madrid back in 2017 he's got a contract of Atletico Madrid until 2026 so he's still got like five and a half six years remaining on his contract and that so he could be in our midfield in 2023 could Nagias uh, may, so too could Jack Grealish as well because Jack Grealish is one of our priority targets but that'd be a good mid, midfield trio wouldn't it Fernandez, Nagias and Paul Popper and I think, you know, our front three in 2023 uh, could be, you know, Sancho obviously on the right hand side Rashford on the left-hand side and Moussa Dembele up top. That obviously, you know, then means Martial, you know, would drop out. You know, maybe actually, you know, Martial could be gone in the next few, couple of years' time. I don't think he'll go in the summer. That won't happen. But, you know, you know, the news on Moussa Dembele, you know, there's been reports saying that, you know, we've reached a verbal agreement. We've reached, sorry, a total agreement for Moussa Dembele. You know, he said it'll, it'll cost us around £61, £62 million. Pounds, but I definitely know to Moussa Dembele at Manchester United. So that's how I think, you know, we could line up in 2023. But 2023, you know, is a while away yet. Um, you obviously know some of the video that I did uh, the other day. You know, I give you, you know... I went through with you, you know, how Man United could line up next season, you know, with Grealish, Sancho and Mellingham in the team and that. So, um, there you go. Obviously, you know, we've already revealed our plans ahead of the summer transfer window anyway. Obviously, you know, we've said, you know, we want to make around three big signings in the summer. You know, our priority targets are Bellingham, Sancho and Jack Grealish. And like I said, you know, them three players are going to cost us around £220 million and that. That's how much they are going to cost us. Don't forget, I think Solskjaer's got a lot of confidence going into the summer transfer market. Obviously, you know, don't forget Solskjaer did say last week 
that I have, you know, made a key transfer statement. And, you know, he says, you know, we will enjoy a different transfer window, you know, to the recent transfer windows and that. Um, obviously, Ed Woodward, of course, came out quite a few weeks ago. And, you know, he insists we may not do business as usual in the summer transfer market. You know, like we have done in recent, you know, in the recent transfer windows. And he basically ruled out big transfers to Manchester United. I was hearing reports saying that we could get 200 odd million pounds to spend this summer. You know, that's that's how much, you know, Manchester United could get. But Solskjaer, you know, said he wants to make around three or four signings this summer. You know, and obviously, you know, don't forget Solskjaer still wants to continue the policy of recruiting young British talents to Manchester United, you know, like he did do last summer. But I've got to say, you know, we have really, really improved in the transfer market under Solskjaer. Obviously, you know, he's when the summer transfer window opens, you know, it will be Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager because Solskjaer will definitely be here next season. But so far, Solskjaer's enjoyed three transfer windows at the football club and obviously, you know, recommended five players in and spent around £220 million. The five players, you know, Solskjaer's recommended in so far, you know, have done very, very well. And I've got to say, definitely the sign that Bruno Fernandes has saved Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job at Manchester United and that. And like I said to you, you know, there's obviously, you know, players of up and down the generations, you know, that, you know, in reality, Manchester United should have signed. Prime example, Ronaldinho should have got him under Ferguson, didn't. Ramsey came close to getting him in 2008. Uh, Cruz... I think was close to getting him under Moyes, you know, I think we're, at one point was close to getting Bale, Alan Shearer, you know, back under the Ferguson era, that was in the early days of the Ferguson era, you know, when we came close to getting Alan Shearer, you know, early in Highland in January under Solskjaer, you know, we should have got him, it's a shame that we didn't get early in Highland because he would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing, Perisic and Griezmann in 2017 under the Jose Mourinho era, we should have also got them two players as well, so we have missed out you know, on, you know, players, you know, in reality that Manchester United should have signed in that. But like I said, you know, Solskjaer's also got rid of a lot of the Deadwood since he got recommended into the football club, which is good. Um, obviously, you know, he's planning on getting rid of more Deadwood this summer. We are going to get rid of around six, seven, six or seven players this summer. Uh, Jones, Lingard, Pereira, Sanchez, Delore. Gomez, I think they're the players that are going to leave Manchester United. Well, there again, Lingard may stay for another year because we have got um, an option, you know, to extend Lingard's contracts for a further year and that. So definitely, you know, Solskjaer's going to get rid of more players. But like I've said to you, you know, Solskjaer's promoted the youth very, very well because the young players have been given their opportunities this season. There again, some of the young players haven't been given their opportunities and that. Uh, but um, there you go. Like I said, we've got around nine players' contracts that are due to expire next year. So that's something else, you know, we do need to sort out. But, um, yeah. So anyway, guys, that is everything to update you with today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.